Happy New Year, everyone! No zoo for you here, and I think that now is the perfect time to go over the best premium ships of 2016. Now that 2016 is behind us, and 2017 is upon us. So, I'm gonna do a top five countdown of what I feel were the best five premium ships that were released this year. Now, this is not going to include award ships. Those are ships like the Kamikaze R, the Missouri, or the Flint. These are only ships that were solely for purchase, whether by doubloons or in the premium shop. Now, I know some of these ships might have been made available, but as a general rule, if these ships were available to be won through gameplay, they are not included in this list. So, before we get started, there are a couple of honorable mentions. These are ships that were really good, in my opinion, but just didn't quite make it into the illustrious top five. Those ships are the Loyang, the Anshan, and the Molotov. All three of these ships had very good merits, but there were things that kept it out of the top five. The Loyang, for instance, is nothing more than a Benson. It's a Benson that you can purchase. It was premium. So, while a very good ship, I feel we've already got it in-game. The Anshan, similar to that as well. I thought it was a really good destroyer, a fun destroyer, but once again, just not good enough to crack that top five. And as for the Molotov, I had a hard time keeping this out of the top five. The Molotov, in my opinion, was a great premium ship. It was really good. Hard-hitting guns, fast, like a perfect Russian cruiser. However, there were five ships that I thought deserved it just ever so much more than the Molotov. That doesn't mean the Molotov's not a great ship, because in my opinion it was. It just didn't make my list. Might have made yours, not mine. So anyhow, without further ado, I'm going to count down the top five with a little help from the one, the only, the beautiful and multi-talented Mrs. Zoop. She's going to do the countdown for us. So, let's begin. Number five. The Arizona. Now, I had a lot of trouble placing the Arizona, and I knew it was in my top five, but I didn't know if I wanted it at five or four. In the end, I put it at number five for the premium ships that were released this year. Arizona has a 55% win-loss ratio right now, and it's just behind our number three and number four ship as well. It averages 50,000 average damage with a 46% survivability, which among US battleships is pretty good. The Arizona is just a load of fun to play. It can tank damage and it can deal damage. I know there is a lot of controversy regarding this ship and whether or not people wanted to see it in the game, Bollocks to that, I'm glad the Arizona made it in World of Warships because I have enjoyed playing it immensely. The Arizona is just a load of fun. While there are some aspects of it that I don't like, including its speed and its anti-aircraft capability, as a whole, the Arizona is an absolute blast. And if you have not picked it up yet, I recommend picking it up if you do have the chance. So there you have it at number five, the one and only famous USS Arizona. Great ship. Number four. At number four, I placed the Dunkirk. Now this might be a little bit controversial to some of you all, and I had a hard time deciding whether or not I wanted the Dunkirk at five or four. But in the end, I felt that the Dunkirk was just a better ship and a more versatile ship than the Arizona. A lot of players don't understand the Dunkirk. They like to get in the Dunkirk and play it like an Arizona or any other battleship. They charge in, bow forward because your eight guns are located in there, and as soon as they find the enemy, they stop and start backing up. Well, that is not how you play the Dunkirk. The Dunkirk is basically a giant cruiser. It's armed with eight guns that are powerful, but it's not the AP that makes the Dunkirk so deadly. It's the HE and the phenomenal fire percentage chance on the Dunkirk. The Dunkirk can absolutely melt ships to the sea. I really, really enjoy this ship. It's fast. The armor might not be there. It catches fire like a matchbox, but it's able to light ships on fire very, very easily. Dunkirk is an absolutely fun ship, and I think it really, really deserves to be in my number four spot, at least. Moving on. Number three. Ah, the Belfast. Currently sporting a 55% win rate on US servers alone, it's 10th best of all ships currently in North America. 
I mean, what more can I say about the Belfast? Radar, Hydro, Smoke, and Tier 7. Plus, unlike the other British cruisers out there, you have both HE and AP. This ship is nasty. If you're working in tandem with another Belfast, it can be particularly nasty, especially if you're feeding off of each other's smoke. You can stay perpetually hidden. The Belfast may be the ultimate destroyer-destroying ship in the game. I absolutely love the Belfast. A lot of people have fallen in love with the Belfast. In fact, if the Belfast had been given torpedoes when it was released, it would have been downright overpowered. The Belfast can be one of the most annoying ships to play against in the game. So, I think it rightfully deserves the number three spot for my top five premiums of 2016. If you like British cruisers and you have not yet picked up the Belfast, I highly suggest looking into the ship and picking it up. It is an absolute riot to play. Number two. Number two was another one of those hard ones. Overall, at number two, I went with the Scharnhorst. Sporting 54,000 average damage at tier seven and a 52% win rate on the North American servers, the Scharnhorst is just an absolute fun ship to play. It's like any German battleship. You've got speed, you've got armor, you've got guns, and you've got torpedoes. The Scharnhorst is downright menacing. There's nothing like playing in another battleship and watching an enemy battleship catch up to you and eventually overtake you. That is the power of the Scharnhorst. You can literally chase down other ships, including Colorados. Those are my favorite target as far as battleships are concerned because they are slow, lumbering walruses. You can catch up to them in the Scharnhorst and torp them. Really, Scharnhorst is a load of fun to play. It gets favorable matchups, which is another good thing about the Scharnhorst. You're gonna wind up usually at the top tier when you play the Scharnhorst, and it's an absolute bully when playing against tier sixes and tier fives. If you're up tiered in the Scharnhorst, no problem. You can still hold your own on account of that wonderful turtleback armor, your torpedoes, and your speed. Scharnhorst is probably one of the best releases of this year, if not ever, and it was a really, really tough decision for me to keep the Scharnhorst out of the number one spot. But I truly think the ship that I have at number one deserves to be number one. And here we go. Number one. The Mikhail Kutuzov. Does it feel like it came out last year in 2015? Well, I guess that would be two years ago at this point, since it's now 2017. No, it didn't. The Kutuzov came out this year, at the very beginning of the year. And I fell in love with this ship. Everyone fell in love with this ship. Over time, its stats have kind of normalized. It's leveled out. Its win rate is only 51% on North American servers. Don't hold that against the ship. It's been out longer than any of the other premiums out there. And as a result of that, like I said, things have normalized. More players have the ship. It's been in a lot more battles. What's not to like about this ship? It's got smoke. It's got good concealment. On top of that, your AP can be absolutely devastating against enemy cruisers. The Kutuzov is basically a jack of all trades, and it is a threat in every single category. Don't discount your AA also. You are an aircraft carrier's worst enemy. If they fly any of their planes, any of their fighter squadrons in your general direction, they are going to get melted from the sky. To that point, I have a clear sky achievement in the Kutuzov. Yes, it is that good. Kutuzov is just an all-around great ship. In the very beginning, when it was first released, Everybody said it was OP. Whether or not that's true, I, I don't think so. It's not an OP ship, it's just a really, really good ship. It's a troll ship. If you play with two other friends in a division with Kutuzovs, you're gonna absolutely wreck. It's just fun. It's an absolute blast. That, I, I can't say much more about it. I love this ship. And I really think it's deserving as the number one premium ship of 2016. Absolutely. I have no doubt about that at this point. I, I love the ship, and I know a lot of you do as well. So there you have it. Those are your top five premium ships of 2016. Number five, the Dunkirk. Four, the Arizona. Three, Belfast, which once again in the hands of an experienced player can be downright devastating. 
but it's also a risk reward ship. Those that don't know how to play it aren't going to do that well. Number two, the Sharnhorst. Anyone can do well with the Sharnhorst. Anyone. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced player, which is what makes the Sharnhorst such a great ship. And finally, at number one, the Mikhail Kutuzov. One of my favorite ships in the game. Just a really versatile and fun ship. Now, those are the top five premiums of 2016. I'm not going to leave with just that. I'm going to give you the bottom two ships. Yes, there are ships that just absolutely did not cut it as premium ships are concerned. Number two. And I'm not having my wife read these off. I'm not going to give her the indignity of doing that. So number two, the USS Indianapolis. Now, while not a bad ship, it's not a horrible ship. As far as a premium ship, I just do not personally believe it lived up to expectations. Had a very, very pronounced citadel, and just for a heavy cruiser did not play as many of us expected it to. I personally would not tell you to spend your money on this ship. And it's just a continuation of problems with the US cruiser line. Indianapolis just did not live up to what I thought it should have been. Number one, the Krasny Krim. Yes, when you think of horrible premium ships, this is the one that springs to mind. The Krispy Kreme. And to drive home that fact, there have only been 16,000 Krispy Kreme battles on the North American server. That's 200,000 less than the Marblehead, which has the second least amount of games played in it. Surprisingly, the Krim has a 50% win-loss ratio. That's not that bad, and I suspect the players that play in it actually know what they're doing and might have just picked it up for the hell of it, just for yucks. Its average damage is 24,000, which in my opinion is pretty low. Not that good. So the ship, while it might not have the worst stats, it's just not fun to play. It doesn't excel in anything. Its AP doesn't excel. Its HE doesn't excel. Its armor's not that great. Even in its own tier, it's not a fun ship. So, the worst premium release of the year, in my opinion, the good old Krispy Kreme. So there you have it. Are you wondering what ships you should pick up that you haven't yet? Use this as an example. Do you agree with my assessment? Do you agree with my top 5 premium ships of 2016? Let me know. Post a comment. What were your favorite premium ships of 2016? Did I leave one out that you absolutely love? Let me know. I'm interested to hear your opinions. Now I know that 2016 is over. We've got 2017 on the way. And one can only imagine the wonderful premium ships we're going to have heading our way. But for me, if I'm telling you to pick up one ship that you haven't picked up yet, maybe two, I would go with either the Sharn Horse or the Kutuzov. Because those are the best two premium ships of 2016. Thanks for joining me, guys. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful 2017. I wish you all the best of luck in game and in real life. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you all later.